Hi guys. So today I am here to finally do a video about how I create slash created my curriculum for the homeschool year. So today's curriculum that I will be speaking about is for um, my five and today is Noah's birthday, seven year old. Um, so my seven year old is in second grade and um, Bryce, the five year old is kindergarten first grade I told him kindergarten work last year so this year it's kindergarten first grade well you know little combination so I will be showing you how I created the curriculum for them too and um, I will also have a video coming up on creating some sort of a curriculum for three and four year old there you go um, and I can even go younger than that if there is interest in that topic so um, I'm gonna go through all of my preparation of how I got to the point where the curriculum was done and I feel confident in what I came up with. So stay tuned. One thing that I have consistently done is always have a topic that I want the boys to learn about for the week. More detailed topics will get two weeks, but for the most part, every topic we learn about it for a week. Now, as far as my teaching schedule, I teach them Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. The way I came up with this, I, I did that the whole last school year, and that's because I work on Wednesdays and Saturdays, so I don't teach them on the day that I'm not here. But um, I have solicited my husband to do a light lesson with them on Wednesdays. Um, and he will be doing mostly social studies, world history type stuff, geography, all of that kind of stuff. Because he's much better at that than I am anyway. So, But it won't be too, too structured for him. One, he's not a structured person like that. And also, I like when they're able to see more than one learning style, more than one teaching style. And with me being very structured and having worksheets prepared and things like that my husband probably won't be doing that he'll probably wing most of it which you know that's his teaching style and i do like for them to see that we're not all the same because there's they always say they could learn something that maybe they wouldn't have even learned from me just from hearing other people's ways of teaching it because you know there's not just one way to learn so for starters I came up with the things that I wanted to, them to learn about. So I'll just throw some topics out there. I'll actually name topics that I know I have on our list for this year and I've probably had for the past three or four years. We just go over it again. That's how you get it ingrained in your brain. So let's say um, the solar system. Let's say different types of animals, modes of transportation, the continent germs that's actually our topic for this week so whatever it is i we that's the first thing i do come up with a list of all the things that i want all the topics i want them to learn about so i will actually show you my layout right here from the topics that i came up with i did this layout that layout to me is important because it keeps you from forgetting certain holidays um you know you don't want to wait until let's say thanksgiving is coming up and it's like the week of and you're trying to scramble and come up with a, a turkey project or whatever. I had a calendar in front of me with all of the dates of events, holidays, activities that come up during this school year and I made sure that I put that topic where it fit. For instance, look at this month. So this is November. The first week we're going to talk about organs. We're going to talk about food because it's going into Thanksgiving and then we're going to talk about family because that has everything to do with Thanksgiving and then we actually talk about Thanksgiving. So yeah, and then for us, black history is very important, but we don't wanna wait until February to talk about it. So I almost had it to where the start of every month, we're gonna talk about a person in black history. And then for the month of February, we're gonna talk about things that are related to black history, such as racism, slavery, and black inventions. So after I did that, another thing, the next thing I did was come up with a list of all the things that they need to learn for the school year. So I have this book, it's called Home Learning Year by Year. And so I go through the book and it gives you a breakdown. 
I do like this book. I was actually told about it when I was at a um, homeschool meetup I used to go to before the pandemic. Um, and so it, you go by your child's grade and then it'll give you a breakdown for every subject of what your child needs to learn. So for Noah, I would go to second grade and then I would look and I would see everything that he should be knowing for language or he should be learning in second grade for language arts, mathematics, history and geography, science, foreign language, art, music, health, and physical education. It gives you that complete breakdown, which I love. So from there, um, I look at the list and I, you know, check off the things that he already knows that may be on that second grade list. And then I write down all the other stuff that I know he needs to brush up on or I know he does not know yet. And of course I did the same thing for Bryce as well. So I'm gonna show you what that layout looks like. It's not so much of a layout, it's just a list, really. The room that I'm sitting in has one of our systems in it to heat the house and air out the house, um, HVAC. And uh, it's, I turned it off, but I don't know, it still makes noise, so I hope it's not too loud, because I realized in one of my other videos that it was like kind of loud, and I felt really bad about that. I'm gonna show you this list on my computer. So I literally labeled it need to know, and for Noah, I need to teach him alphabetical order, abbreviations, contractions. He needs to be able to identify these things in a book. Um, and then rhyme, rhythm, alliteration, simile, and metaphor. As far as writing, I want him to start writing more short stories, learning how to write a poem, um, nonfiction, and letter writing, which he has been writing letters since he was three or four. No, he was four. He had a, um, a pen pal, one of his best friends. And so, but I never like sat down and like taught a lesson on how to write a letter because he was four. And then, and so math, rounding, symmetry, ordinal positions, graphs, adding money, counting money, all that good stuff. And then here's Bryce's list of what he needs to learn. Bryce is technically, if he was in school, he would only be in kindergarten. So I'm not on his neck too hard, but I'm definitely gonna be teaching him these things as well. Coming up with the list of what the kids need to learn is imperative because otherwise, what are you gonna be teaching them? You need to know what your objectives are. Speaking of objectives, so this is my other little breakdown. This, this is the learning objectives. So for week one, if you saw my first week of school, homeschool video, then you will already know that we did this stuff. So this is Bryce's learning objective for the first week of school. Um, his vocabulary word was bashful. He was brushing up on adding. This is what he learned in sign language. And then the topic of the week was all about me. This is the second week of school and for ELA he is learning punctuation. And I actually need to add right here sentence structure. Just making sure that he's starting sentences with an uppercase and ending with some sort of punctuation. So I like to have the learning objectives down, written down because one, you wanna make sure that you know what the goal is, what they're working toward. That'll help you to move forward because I'll, sometimes I'll look on the learning objective for the week before and I'm like, I still don't, you know, I feel like they still don't have a hang of whatever it might be. And then so we'll just go over it for another week or however much longer they need until they, they kind of more get it. Um, so the vocab vocabulary words is something that I started last year. Every week they each get a new vocabulary word. Now, Bryce's list of vocabulary words is Noah's list from last year. And then Noah, I got him a list of second, third grade vocabulary words. So I have the, a list of, I don't know how many I'll use, maybe more, maybe less, but I have a list of 24 words. I think that's how many I ended up doing last year. And so I have them written down. So these are the words that Bryce will be learning this year. And then these are the words that Noah will be learning. So the point of me doing vocabulary words is so that they can expand the vocabulary, learn new words, learn how to spell them, learn their meanings, and begin starting to use them in their everyday language. So what we do exactly with the vocabulary words, they each have a notebook now. They are using the same book that they had last year because they still had lots of pages left in here. So on Monday, they learn the word. They don't have to do anything with it. 
Tuesday, they write the definition of the word. Thursday, they write the word 10 times. And Friday, it says use it in a sentence because that's what Bryce used to do. I like the Statue of Liberty with people inside, I guess. Okay, yeah, his word for that week was people. Um, but now him and Noah use their word in a story just to help them start getting more comfortable with just writing in general. In my research to prep for this school year, I came across some shows that are very educational. I think they were all on Netflix. Now, I know most of you guys have heard of The Magic School Bus. It's an old school show. It was revamped a couple years ago, so they have The Magic School Bus Rides Again, I believe. There also is a show called Storybots. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. And then Brainchild is the one that's really new to me. So what I ended up doing, I'm in a Facebook group for homeschool parents, and someone had mentioned Brainchild, and they said that Brainchild had like a curriculum and everything that went with it so I was like oh maybe that can just save me some time I don't have to like create one and I can just see what they have going on there and in looking and signing up for stuff and whatever I realized that I didn't want to move forward with whatever I had seen that was some sort of a curriculum I, and I ended up you know continuing to make my own but I was able to use some of the episodes so I went through these three shows Storybots, Brainchild, and The Magic School Bus and I wrote down all the episodes that had topics that pertain to what I will be teaching throughout the school year and um, I wrote the showdown with all of the episodes and what they're about so that I can use them during the week that I'm talking about said topic so I'll show you here. We have Storybots. Um, there's an episode about vo volcanoes, the five senses, animal habitats, Brainchild. There's an episode about bodies of water, organs, the solar system. Brainchild also has an episode about germs. I must have accidentally erased it, but we watched it yesterday. It was actually a really good episode. The, the boys learn so much and they, it's very entertaining. I even was like sucked into it. And then the Magic School Bus has episodes about solar system, body of water, Earth Day, things like that. So these TV shows will be incorporated into our learning. What I used to do was whatever the topic was for the week, I would take that topic and just go on YouTube and type in, you know, if we're talking about organs learn about organs for kids or organs for kids or whatever it is, a uh, solar system for kids. And I will always type that into YouTube and then whatever video came up, we would watch it. But I found that kind of got me in trouble sometimes because sometimes I would watch like three minutes of a video before I realized it wasn't really what I was looking for. And then I would have to stop and start again, which means I obviously was not that prepared. I did try to like get any final stuff prepped for the week on Sunday. But then it just didn't always happen, you know, I'm human. So I like this system better because it's actual episodes. It's not like a two minute video, it's something that they can actually sit and watch and learn from. So I much prefer having these episodes, especially because they're already laid out and I don't have to go looking for anything at the last minute. So we have our weekly topics. Now let's talk subjects. So ELA, math, science, art, all of these subjects. Last year what I did was I had them do math for a half an hour and ELA for a half an hour and they did this every day that I taught them. So I did make a change with that. I kind of felt like last year I was always rushing to get through the, t um, the subject because math and ELA are the ones that they did every day that I taught them. So I felt like the 30 minutes just wasn't enough time. So this year I did it a little bit different they alternate math and ELA. So they would basically do math two days a week and ELA two, two days a week. Cause reminder, I'm, I don't teach them on Wednesdays cause I'm working. So Monday it would be ELA, Tuesday math, Thursday ELA, Friday math, something like that. And then the other subjects, I just spread them throughout the week. So I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. So here is my breakdown of the day. So every morning they would eat breakfast at 7.30, eight, they would be brushing their teeth and getting dressed for the day. Every day we would start off with our calendar and daily. Now daily is what I do, what I do for daily is just going over basic stuff that they should know, like quick stuff they should know. Spelling their first, middle, and last name. 
um just you know i found that when i took a break from doing that because it's like oh they know how to spell their middle name they know how to spell their last name and then i would find that on a random day i would ask they would mix up the letters especially bryce because he's younger he used to mix up the letters or he couldn't exactly remember how to spell his middle name so now i pretty much ask every day even if i don't ask them both every day you know i ask pretty much every day and sometimes i just change up the question one day i may only ask to you know for what their middle and last name is another day i may just say can you spell your middle name or you know something silly like can you spell your first name backwards whatever it may be um making sure that they know their address down to the city county that they live in the state country planet that they live on all of that um that all falls under calendar and of course calendar is just going over what the day of the week is what's the date what was yesterday's date tomorrow's date how many months in a year days in a year days in a week seasons all those things just daily going over that so that they just don't forget so that it comes natural like how it is with us adults like we don't have to think twice about i mean here lately we think twice about what day it is but before life got so crazy you didn't have to really think about what day it was you just knew because it came second nature then after that we go over their word of the week so whether it's monday and we're learning it tuesday and we're writing the definition whatever it may be we do that next followed by um like i was saying either ela or math depending on the day and then the lesson of the week always comes at 10 o'clock aside from ela and math we have other subjects and other activities so on monday they do sign language at 11 and cooking class at 12. on thursdays they have swimming at 11 30 we just go to open swim and fridays they either do art or science we alternate monday wednesday thursday and friday they earn stamps at 3 30. i don't know if you see my other video about my stamp chart um if not go check that out and then you'll see exactly what i mean when they say they earn stamps they can do this while they have a snack and then they have taekwondo monday and wednesdays now let's just go over to tuesday tuesday i switched it up a little bit and tuesdays they have the morning open because last year i found that there was just such a conflict getting them to piano on time and i think they were even going to piano at 11 30 at that time but we would have to, either me or Eric would have to leave at 10, 30, 11 o'clock, depending, I think we have to leave at 11 to take them. But anyway, it was just too much. I felt like I was rushing all morning to get them as much work as I could get done before they had to leave for piano. So I switched that. Now the morning is open. Um, they go to piano at 11 they still have their downtime or whatever and then we learn in the afternoon starting after their nap or their downtime i will do another mommy tip or whatever another video about this because people often ask me how you know they're impressed that the kids like go to bed on time like they have a bedtime and they go to bed at that time so i don't mind speaking about that either other than that as you can see this is what i was talking about for wednesday this is what my husband will be doing with them in his own way okay and so to keep myself on track and so that the kids kind of have an idea of what's excuse me what's going to transpire next i use the chart that i showed you they have i have this up on the wall so that they can see it and I usually keep one downstairs in the kitchen as well, just so throughout the day we can kind of stay on track. And then I also have this that I have posted. So it just kind of helps me to like gauge how long, you know, sometimes you start going over, you may get too into it. So, you know, at 8.45 calendar and daily, the word of the week is a 20 minute activity. And then for 40 minutes, we're either doing math or ELA. The topic of the week, story time. Oh yes, I do read a story to them. That relates to the topic of the week. I will actually speak about that in a second. And then we go to activity of the day, lunch, downtime, and then earning snacks. So that's helpful so that they can always see that. Now, what I was gonna say about story time is that, again, Sunday prep. Sunday prep includes getting together the worksheets that I need to do, deciding an art project if I haven't already decided it, and if I have decided it, making sure that it's completely prepped um, if I could do it on that Sunday, if not, you know, sometimes I might do it the night before or I'll do it right as I'm teaching them. If it's something that doesn't take too long, like they may be doing a worksheet while I'm cutting out, whatever. 
and then I also choose the books that relate to the topic. Now, if you don't have a lot of books at home, you can either buy some or you can borrow from the library, which I think is a great idea. We have a lot of books here. We have so many books in this house. A lot of times I don't have to buy a new book or sometimes it'll be like every couple of topics that I may just bought, buy some books from Amazon or we will go to the library and they can borrow books from the library because I like them to like understand that system of borrowing books because we all did it as kids. So let's say the topic is the solar system again. So then I'm gonna go through all of my books, all of the kids books rather, and then I'm gonna find all the books that have to do with the solar system. Now, if I don't do that on Sunday night or I don't prepare that ahead of time, I actually, the kids have a good time helping me do that and it helps them to kind of like think, you know, use their, their thinking skills. Okay, mommy said, um, we have to find any books that have anything to do with the solar system. So it could be a book where they even just mention planet Earth or they mention Mars and they may remember, oh, that one book that we have, they talk about Mars, you know, can we read that book? So I'm like, yeah, sure. So then they go through all the books and they pull out, sometimes they come up with 10 books that are about the topic, sometimes only two, it really depends. Even if your child knows how to read, I think it's always good to continue reading to them. The reasons are because you want them to hear your reading style. They will learn how to read better by listening to the cadence of your voice and they'll start learning how the rhythm of reading is supposed to go because you know sometimes when they start reading early it's just like a flat line but then when they hear you read they kind of like understand the way that they're supposed to read. Also you don't want reading to feel like a punishment. You don't want it to be like, oh, I always have to read. So when they see that you enjoy reading to them, they'll, I think it'll help them to enjoy reading more themselves. So I read the books that have to do with the topic, but then they also both are reading chapter books. So I have a my log that I keep of, um, I can actually do another video of like my setup of my homeschool portfolio, but, um, I have uh, my log that I keep of the books that I've read to them. And then now, starting this year, they have their log of the books that they are reading on their own, their chapter books. Literary Adventures of, and then Noah's Name. They have these um, in their books right now, but I'm just showing you the one on the computer. So they would just write their name right there. They write the title of the book, how many pages, the date they started, date they finished. And I like this little thing that I added here where they can just basically start thinking hmm this was a good book because this wasn't that good of a book because I'm only going to rate it a, a two I'm going to rate it a five whatever it may be so as far as the preparation for the week I also get their worksheets out ahead of time if you've seen any of my other videos then you may know that I swear by education.com and so I'm going to show you how I come, how I find their worksheets. Let's say that Noah is working on multiplication, right? So in here, I can type in multiplication. There we go. Click on that. And then, okay, do I want printable worksheets, online games, guided lessons or lessons plans? Usually I'm looking for printable worksheets or online games. So another thing I want to do is I want to target his age so he's in the second grade so I will click second grade so now they're not going to give me anything too babyish or too advanced so let's say okay I want him to work on a worksheet so it's like okay perfect they have this one where it's multiplying by two so I would just click on print the worksheet and here we go I would press print there we go he has a worksheet okay now let's say in ELA he is working on he is working on verbs And type in verbs and then okay I want a printable worksheet okay look at this fill in the blanks there we go and then I would print this out and then he would sit and work on this okay now let's say I wanted to do games so now let's go back let's see if they have any games about verbs online games okay nouns and verbs sort click on this and then I can actually assign this game to him so I would go to assign this game, I would put it in whatever category, or I would create a new category. Let's say I name it parts of speech, right? Parts of speech. Continue, and then this is for Noah. So now Noah 
when he opens up the computer and he goes to check his assignments, he will see that he has an assignment from me that says um, that is for whatever the topic is. Sometimes I might be working with Noah at the board and Noah is, let's say Noah is rounding to 100, right? So I'm working on him with that. I'm actually teaching him it for the first time and we're actively working on it. And there's nothing brand new that I'm teaching Bryce at that moment. Then I might say, Bryce, go on your computer and check your assignments. And then he'll look and see that he has three adding games that he has to do. So then he can busy himself with those uh, adding games while I'm continuing to teach Noah how to round to 100. And then maybe after that we might switch. Maybe um, I need to spend you know, 20 minutes with Bryce working on sentence structure. So now we're at the board doing that. And then Noah may be doing his assignments. Usually after I've taught them and I feel like they kind of have an understanding, then I'll say, okay, here, I have a worksheet for you. And then they'll do the worksheet to the best of their ability or they'll ask for my help or whatever the case may be. And so, like what I was saying about the worksheets, here are some worksheets that I've already printed out for Noah, because he's doing alphabet, um, alphabetizing, alphabetical order. So I have some alphabetical order. Here are worksheets, and then here's kind of an activity sheet where he's gonna be cutting and gluing. And then this is alphabetical order states, things like this. And then this is prepped for when we talk about autumn, more prep from when we talk about autumn, things like that. And then I have Bryce's sheets, some of um, his upcoming sheets here. So he's working on sentence structure and punctuation, things like that. So he has that, he's working on continuing to build his confidence in adding more sentence structure and punctuation, subtracting, things like that. So all this stuff is prepped. If you are interested in me going a little bit more in detail about the perks of education.com, how I use it and things like that, please comment below and let me know and I will definitely do that. Also, if you want to know more about setting up a curriculum for younger kids, which is a little less intense, which I don't I don't know. Now that I have it all together, it doesn't feel so intense. But when I was creating the curriculum this year, I may have just psyched myself out because Noah's in second grade and I wanna make sure that I'm doing the best that I can with him. And every year is a brand new year. Every year I'm doing something for the first time because, you know, I'm figuring it out. Okay, now I'm homeschooling a second grader. Next year I'm gonna be freaking out about homeschooling a third grader. And then after that fourth grader, you know, it's, it can be a little bit scary. It's getting the curriculum together for younger kids is a little easier because you don't, there's not as much pressure. There's not as much that they need to learn. They definitely should be spending a lot of time playing and you know incorporating things here and there. So if you're interested in hearing that, let me know. If there's anything else that I can help out with homeschool wise, I hope this helped because I had a few people ask me for it. It's a little, it can be overwhelming, especially if you do it the way I do, because as you can see, I have a cheat for everything, but it's just, it, it's what works for me. And also another thing I was saying is that if you want to, if you want me to do a video about how I put together the kids homeschool portfolio, let me know and I can do that as well. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and that you have a little bit more confidence in getting yourself prepared for your homeschool year or changing anything up that you might want to change adding anything whatever it is that you decide to do if this helped at all then i'm very grateful and happy that i was able to help continue watching my videos stay tuned in hit the bell button subscribe comment all that good stuff and um you'll be able to see i'm basically going to be going through my entire homeschool year this year so i'm gonna vlog for the whole week and then I'll put together a really cool video at the end of the week so you can see how like the activities that I did for each topic that we learn about for the week and how I taught them each subject or whatever the case may be just stay tuned and come hang out with us I think it'll be fun I think you'll enjoy it have a blessed day I'm so glad that you watched that I appreciate the views and all that good stuff and I will see you in the next video